I've never done that before. It kind of scared me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, well, first let me share to my little slideshow. Let me find it first. Um, let's see. I have to remember how to work Google Slides. Oh, never mind. Here it is. Okay. Welcome and hello to the St. Louis Public Library's virtual program on how to create a zine in InDesign. Uh, I will be your host, Taki. And with me, I have my awesome moderator assistant and um, self-proclaimed zine expert. So <laughs> <laughs> done it a few times. So I feel like I've got this down. Yeah. So if you have any questions, ask her. <laughs> um, so in this program, I'll be giving a little bit of background on what zines are and how you can use the creative experience space which is our kind of department um, to where you can use our computers or if you have InDesign on your own computers, you're welcome to do that as well um, to make zines and also print them out on our printers. Um, you, do, you see me looking down, I'm prepared a whole outline for me to look over so I don't miss anything. Um, for the people who joined a little later, I have a poll at the bottom. Um, just if you could fill that out for me to let me know how you found out about this program, that would be great. Um, so what is a zine? Um, zines were first created in the science fiction fandoms of, of the 1930s taking their name from fanzine, which is short for fan magazine. Long before the advent of the internet, zines allowed fans to create networks, share ideas and analysis. I hope I said that right, probably not, uh, and collaborate on writing and artwork. The zine is a self-published non-commercial print work that is typically produced in small, limited batches. Um, zines are created and bound in many DIY ways, but traditionally, editions are easily reproduced, often by crafting original master flats and photocopying, folding, and stapling the pages into simple pamphlets. Sorry, I should have grabbed water. Um, zines may also be sewn, taped, glued, or even exist in unbound non-portfolio or non-folio formats. Zines can explore a variety of topics from art, music, politics, and whatever you want to showcase really. If you have drawings, photos, poems, anything like that, you can showcase it in a zine. Um, their content may be written, drawn, printed, collaged, or any form of combining words and imagery. Um, so I want to take a moment to promote, we have a zine collection, move that a little bit over. Uh, so our zine collection is on the second floor of the St. Louis Public Library Central location downtown. Um, and it is in the entertainment literature and biography room. Uh, it is well, you're welcome to come in anytime you don't need an appointment to show up. Um, I had a teacher that wanted to bring students by and they wanted to know what were the special requirements to see it. It's not really any special requirements. It's just like library books. You can come in, take a look at them. Um, you can even check them out for the normal three week loan period. If no one has a hold on it, it'll automatically extend. Um, there is also I have it covered up over here, but there's a little box where you can make your own zine and pretty much leave a zine, take a zine. So if you created something and you want others to see it, 
you can leave yours and then take one you find interesting with you. I believe you can also create a zine to be put on display in the library. I want to say you might have to talk to either of the librarians, Wes Harbison or Crystal, I'm blanking on her last name. Whoever is working up there, you could talk to them um, about having your own zine put into the collection. Um, I want to note that two of my favorite zines, well, a group of my favorite zines are over here. This one in particular, Fluffy, about a cute little bunny girl who goes throughout life um, and is always being called cute. She's so tiny and she's so cute. Oh, you look so young. You need to be carded to be at this bar. I kind of relate to that. I get all the time that I look like I should be in high school still. So this one, I really felt personally connected to. Um, and also the author of these three, Kel Chu, I had asked her to be my mentor for a college class, um, maybe a couple years back. And she was really cool. I got really good information on how she maintains her zines, how she has time to work on art and also have other things, have time for other things to do in life, uh, go to work, pay bills, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so she was really sweet. And I also wanted to showcase the moon zine, which a couple of, um, a past worker of the St. Louis Public Library and the current worker, Wes, that I mentioned earlier, they worked on this beautiful collection of zines, um, which had poetry and different little short stories and really cool artwork in it. So I recommend these to check out whenever you're here. Um, so I hope if I'm going a little bit too fast, please stop me. Um, so now I will share my screen and we can do a, well, first let me ask, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So I will share my screen over to InDesign. Oh. Hello, welcome in. Um, we've kind of gotten started already. I will let you know this will be this is being recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, you're welcome to turn off your camera. Um, but this will be recorded. So if you missed anything, it'll be on YouTube later. Um, okay. And if you have any questions, you can either turn on your mic or use the chat feature. And we also have a poll just to let us know uh, how you found out about the program. Okay. Now I'll share my screen. And I kind of have an example already pulled up, but we can kind of start by doing kind of a fresh version and then coming back to this one. Um, also, just to let you know, InDesign is really good, not only for zines, but creating layouts for books, magazines, and brochures. It's really helpful. Um, so the first step you want to do is to go, it won't come up like this when you have it because I already have this made, but it'll have the general um, start menu for InDesign. And what you want to do is go to new and document. 
and want to do that, we kind of have a auto set or preset for zines. Do you want to go to print? And view all presets and it is a five. It defaults to picas. We're gonna change it to millimeters. And we'll keep that the same. If you want to give your zine a title or your working file a title, you can do that here. Just leave that there for now. Um, pages, you want to give it a number of pages, an even number of pages, just so you have your pages in the front and back cover. And you always want to keep facing pages checked. With this, I will have mine set to 12. Um, and my example will be of photographs I just took on my phone that I thought were really interesting. Um, so after that, keep it to 12 pages setting or facing pages. And you want to unlink your margins. Um, because we'll have to change a couple of our margins. If you don't unlink it, it'll change all of them at the same time. Like that. Uh, so we want to unlink it. And we'll set our top margin to 19. And our bottom one. And then the inside, oh, I looked at that wrong. The bottom is 21. Did I look at that right? I'm getting confused. I'm so sorry. Bottom is 25. Inside is 21. Okay. We also want to unlink bleed and set all the edges except the inside edge to five millimeters. Okay, and we'll leave slug alone and you'll just hit create. So now you kind of have your face pages. If you would like to see all of your pages kind of at the same time, there are, there is this zoom, zoom in, zoom out option that you can use or with your keyboard commands. I'm on a Windows computer, so it will be Alt in the scroll on the mouse. I believe on a Mac is maybe Control in scroll. scroll. Um, but that's how you zoom in and out of the workspace. Mm -hmm. So now, what you'll want to do, I'm going to skip the cover page for now and just come to where I'll put my content. Uh -huh. And what I want to do is come over to this panel over here on the left and we'll use the frame tool. as a easy layout marker. Um, and we also have these margins set up. So that is also a good way to have markers for your pages. Um, but it doesn't have to follow that specifically. You can have multiple boxes. This is just a way to say, I want a picture here, I want picture here, maybe text over here. Um, so 
it's the easy way to do that easiest way to do that um, and you can do it for all of your pages no need to create separate layers like in a program like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop It'll all be on its own separate thing. Do all the pages. I'll just come back to the first one. Um, once you have all your pages laid out, you can start to put your content in. So I will go to select first and make sure my first frame is selected. And I'll go to file and place and I have all of my photos saved to downloads I'll go here find my photo not those okay I'll choose this one and hit open and it'll place my photo inside the frame that I made um, so it kind of looks a bit off center. So what I'll do is come over to the right side and under frame fitting, there are options for it to fit proportionally uh, or fit based on how big the picture is. So content wise, this I'll do proportionally. And if there's something maybe you don't need some of the bottom edge of this you can come over to this little white circle and kind of move it down that just readjusts it um, so you can place your pictures in there your drawing artwork anything like that that way or you can go to a normal folder and drag and drop your pictures in um, I'm going to add a photo to this one. Place. I'm going to say it was this one. I'm going to place this one in here. And it starts off small. I'll add it. And as you can see, it's pixelated. And the way to fix that, it's probably on a low display. So you'll go to view and display the performance and make it a high quality display. And that gets rid of the pixelated image and you can see it for the full clear view. Um, let me grab another photo. So this one is rotated. Um, if you want it to be this way, that's fine. Or if you wanted to rotate it and just have someone flip your, the zine over, what you can do is select it and go to object and transform and rotate. I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees, kind of moved it up there. I'm going to adjust these with the adjust markers to kind of fit in the frame I created. And then use frame fitting to blow it up. You can also just with the rectangle frame leave it as is where is it place and just fit that in the frame um go to a new page if you wanted to add a background to your zine, you could do one of two things. 
you could like a normal color background you could create a rectangle and over here just select a color and it makes the color of that page whatever color you choose um if you happen to create it over say you laid out all your pictures and then you decided you wanted a color background if you wanted to have it over or if you create it and it came over the picture all you do is have it selected and go to object and arrange and then send backwards so that it's not covering up your content um, and the other way you can do it is by, by creating a gradient um, so there's a gradient tool over here which I have down here if the gradient tool does not show up you can always go to window and color and select gradient and while you're there you also want to select swatches because we'll be creating swatches or using swatches for it um, I want to create a quick swatch. Maybe just something random. And so, yeah, the way you create swatches is by double clicking on the fill tool or the color tool and changing and selecting what color you want. And you'll add it to add CMYK swatch it should appear over here. I'll press OK. Um, so for a gradient background, we'll want to move this over. The little bar is covering it up. Um, we'll want to let me create a rectangle first. There we go. So it's creating the rectangle first, and then in the gradient window, click on the gradient. You can either have a linear gradient going from left to right, or a radial, kind of starting from the middle and coming out in the circle radial view. Um, I'll keep it at radial. So to change the colors for it, you'll want to double click on the white and hmm. normally it gives a normally it gives a color menu when you double click. Now it's not showing up. Try. Okay. Oh. Let's I wonder why it's not showing up. Let's see if I can do it this way. Make it a gradient. 
and then I'll bring. Okay, so what you can do normally when you double click on the white end, um, it will give you a different amount of color options for you to choose from. But since it wasn't working, all you have to do is drag a color from swatches. So be prepared to have swatches ready unless you want the basic colors. And you'll do the same for the black color in. And you can change how much of one end shows versus the other. So you have plenty of options, whether you want a blank page, a solid color page, or a gradient page, or if you have your own designs, you're free to do that as well. Um, and if you want to add text to anything, is not show up well here, I'll do it on the next page. So over here on the left, we have the type tool. You can kind of click and drag and make a marquee for your text. That's just to have a space for all your text to go. St. Louis Public Library. And you can change your text, uh, the font for it. The different sizes. If it happens to be too big, it'll have, it's kind of hard to see a little plus symbol on it. And that's to tell you, you need to arrange the box so that it fits, uh, which you can extend the box or you could just make it smaller or bigger, whichever your preference is. And it also doesn't, the biggest size also doesn't have to be 72. You can make it as big as you want by simply typing in your dimensions. Oh, that may be too big. Let me just bring it back down. It's all on one line. And it is automatically set to paragraph align left. If you need to align it, if you have the box kind of just set in the layout or the margins, you can always do left line, center line, right align, whichever you need to. Or you can also keep it in the box, readjust the size and move it to wherever you want it to be. And your layout also doesn't have to be within the margins. If it needs to stretch across two pages, you are more than welcome to do that. Then it's kind of just whatever you want to make it. Um, and that's kind of the basics for making a zine. I'll go ahead and show off my example. I don't have all the pages filled in. Um, but just different pictures I had, resized, added backgrounds. I didn't do a front and back cover, but you can do a front and back cover. Um, 
And once you're ready to actually print your zine, you want to set it up as a PDF by going to File uh, and Export. And I already have it set up. And it's just Adobe PDF print. And once you're ready, you'll save it. I didn't click yes. And you don't have to worry about any of the settings here. You'll just hit export. And it's really short, really quick, but that is all you have to do to set up your zine. And you can come into St. Louis Public Library, any of them, and use our printers to print front and back copies of your zine so that you have them in color and you can print front and back. And just to let you know, color copies are 25 cents, I believe. So very inexpensive. Or if you have a printer at home, you could do it for free. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Did anyone have any questions or need me to go over anything again? I will also leave my email in the chat in case anyone has any questions maybe they think about later and want to email me and let me know. Um, Sophie, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, you know what? Sure. Um so personally, most of the zines that I've worked on have been very collaborative and you can easily find uh, a lot of resources on Twitter for sure. Any just social media, you can advertise your own. Uh, you can look to sign on to others. Um, a lot of stuff is just kind of done through Google Drive and it's really awesome to be able to collaborate with other artists and writers and you can kind of have like a mixed media zine. So don't feel like this has to be like a solo creation. It absolutely can. You can make your own thing for like a portfolio or just like your own little zine to hand out or recipe booklet, whatever you want. But there's also definitely a lot of different options too online. If you're looking to sort of like create with other people um, and Definitely, there's a lot of really great people who will work with you kind of through the design process. So I wouldn't worry too much if it's your first time, but um, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend kind of like looking online for applications. There's all sorts of different themed ones. I've personally worked on like cookbooks and uh, little video game themed zines, but there's all sorts of stuff like that on Twitter um, or any sort of social media platform. So definitely go look it up and check out, see what other people are doing. Sounds really cool. I didn't think about a cookbook. <laughs> I'll have to show you mine. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, please do. All right. Well, this one was kind of a short program. Um, if no one has any questions or anything, we may just end it early. Um, and again, I have this recorded. So if you missed anything or need to go back, it'll be on YouTube once we upload it. Okay. Um, thank you guys for coming out and attending the program. I hope to see you at one of our next programs, um, which you can find online, the a list of events that we have. If you like this program, I may try to do it again, only if you liked it. Um, or if you had any ideas, anything I can approve, improve on, please let me know. 
All right, well, thank you again, and I'll see everyone later. Good luck on your zines. <laughs>